my god well so much for our beautiful day here in the collapse of everything on this now cold dreary wintry monday afternoon october 7th 2024 we're uh sitting here in uh my goose down jacket at uh four o'clock in the afternoon bringing you the second you lucky guys get two fairly short uh chronicles of the collapse today so i just uh read from this fellow uh dave pollard recently but uh i'll get to a couple of questions on dave's mind in a minute but I wanted to start with this because uh, letting you know, some of you are aware that my Doomer buddy Elliot Jacobson and I uh, try to outdo each other with the weekly puke. We see, we try to see each other, who can outdo each other with finding examples of shit. Uh, out there to make us uh, to bring up the doomer puke and Dave Pollard I guess unintentionally has come up with uh, my vote for this week from a fellow named Canadian naturalist John Livingston from his 1994 book Rogue Primate as Dave says, John can be excused from believing in 1994 that there might be a way to restore that collective consciousness, interconnectedness, and healthy wildness, concluding with this slightly non-dualistic poetic passage. Okay, and I highly advise you to be sitting down and not being having a full stomach with what you're getting ready to hear. Take it away, uh, John uh, Livingston. Maybe this is Li Jonathan. Oh, this is Jonathan Livingston Seagull. That's who wrote this. Anyway, take it away. Jonathan Livingston Seagull, quote, By wildness, I mean the dissolution of the ego-centered self as when one was drawn close, ever closer, and at last into the gold-flecked eye of a toad. Yes. Or when one melted into black, earthy humus, laced with wintergreen on a cool forest floor, or when one's cry of joy was transposed into a gull, there we go, into a seagull clamor by a sea wind pungent with the scent of rotting kelp, when one sought and found, when one relinquished and was free, Look at a child gently holding an unfledged young robin that has fallen from its nest. Look into that child's eyes. The sweet bondage of wildness is recoverable. Oh, God. So, uh, despite uh, the one of the single most god-awful uh, vomit-inducing slices of purple prose I have read this week, at least, I do want to, uh, to do a brief recap of uh, this book, Curtis, compliments of Dave uh, Pollard. Thirty years ago, Canadian naturalist John Livingston, may or may not be Jonathan Livingston Seagull, wrote Rogue Primate, a book about the self-domestication of the human species. Um, the book's main theses, 
Here are the book's main theses, so I don't have to read any more of the actual book. That that one paragraph was enough for me, but I, I like the sound of it. So this is what you can read between the lines of the purple prose. Number one takeaway. Our civilizations, plural, are inherently artificial, prosthetic, i.e., substituting fragile, complicated parts for robust natural ones, ways of being. Our civilizations are inherently artificial, prosthetic ways of being. Number two, civilization requires self-domestication. Learning the technique of how to live in complete dependence on others in unnatural hierarchies, hierarchies under psychologically devastating, barbaric, dense confinement. Anyone who has been following my, uh, my travails with my brake warning light trying to get my vehicle uh, inspected in the state of New York knows exactly uh, what that's talking about uh, being self-domesticated training yourself and learning the techniques to put up with this bullshit being rammed down every one of our throats every day of our lives it's what I think John was trying to say number three we all have, we have all the qualities needed for a domesticated species. This is for anyone getting a vehicle inspection in the state of New York. And whoever's been through what I've been through knows exactly what these qualities include. The qualities needed for a domesticated species such as ourselves, a pliable or weak will, a pliable or weak will, susceptibility to dependence, insecurity, adaptability to different habitats, Inclination to herd behavior, tolerance of physical and psychological maltreatment. Can you say a vehicle inspection in the state of New, New York? Acceptance of habitat homogeneity, high fecundity, yes, high fecundity, social immaturity, rapid physical growth, sexual pre-consciousness, and poor natural attributes, lack of speed, strength, and sensory acuity. Number four, we share these qualities with all the creatures and many plants we have domesticated the only difference is we domesticated ourselves. Number five, once we became d domesticated, we have replaced robust natural ecosystems with poor, fragile, artificially sustained ones all over the world. Genocide of all undomesticated species, including hunter-gatherer humans, has followed. Number six, in apology and denial for what our well-intentioned civilizations have wrought, we have concocted and taught a host of myths about civilization's superiority, nature's brutishness, and that competition, development, 
hierarchy, owned property, inevitable scarcity, and humans' inherent exceptionalism and higher, quote, consciousness are, quote, natural and even divinely ordained. And Dave says much of the book dispels these myths. And number seven, wild creatures have an innate participatory collective consciousness that vastly exceeds our primitive human individual consciousness that extends to their ecological community and into and to the entire Gaia organism of the planet, an interconnectedness to which we and other domesticates have become numb. And uh, thank you for bringing that book to uh, our attention. And then he dives uh, into that uh, for quite a bit. I'll put the link. You can continue with this part of it. But uh, before signing off, Dave tends to ramble. And so before signing off today, so here are the questions I am sitting with now in light of the perilous and precarious situation the world seems to be currently hurtling through. Question number one. Is it reasonable to attribute our species' rogue behavior to the unfortunate accident of the evolutionary emergence of large entangled brains with the illusion that they have selves and are separate from all other life on Earth, as John Livingston hints at when he says we have become that we have evolved to become quote the animal with something askew, or as others like Ronald Wright and John Gray have asserted, were we always an inherently violent species destined to destroy the planet if given the chance? And I am going to throw my lot in with Ronald Wright and John Gray. I mean, anyone who's ever looked at, you know, chimpanzees would know uh, that humans have always been an inherently violent species destined to destroy the planet if given the chance. And now we've been given the chance through fossil fuels and uh, all this other crap, and we are going to do exactly what we've been destined to do. So what is your second question uh, today, Dave Pollard? Given the current level of extreme violence and destructive weaponry in the world, and our recent track record, are we even likely to live to see the worst of climate collapse and the other aspects of ecological collapse, we seem incapable of even beginning to address before we blow ourselves up in a nuclear Armageddon. And this, of course, is uh, you know one of the big questions on all of us doomers' minds. Uh, I really don't, uh, I, 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 I honestly don't know, guys. I'm on the fence. It's a toss-up. Uh, if, if we don't have nuclear Armageddon, everything else is going it, to, it's going to be one of the other and probably a little bit of both is uh, how I would uh, answer Dave's question. Do we have a kind of inherent and religion-inspired death wish to end it all 
in quick and catastrophic fashion rather than face the shame of seeing our planet-destroying systems and behaviors end our and most other species' existence in a more protracted and agonizing fashion. Uh, as I say, the, 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 the question is, is almost moot. Uh, if, if it's not one, it's going to be the other, and it's probably uh, going to be a little bit of both. So, uh, what is Dave's position? I have no firm position on either of these questions, although I admit my ambivalence on both is new. Any arguments that could be made are only speculative anyway, and while I am prone to doing a bit of speculation from time to time, I am increasingly aware that my role on the planet, what I have apparently been conditioned all my life to do without really realizing it, is just to chronicle what seems to be happening and make sense of it as best as I can and leave the speculation to others. So this is uh, well, that, that, that's just all any of us can do is chronicle what seems to be happening uh, in making sense of it the best we can, which is why uh, I offer you all of these different viewpoints. Uh, on, uh, on, on why we're so fucked, and anybody who thinks that we're pulling ourselves out of this tailspin, I hate to tell you, it ain't gonna happen. But anyway, I gotta wrap this up, because uh, my dog needs to eat his factory farmed chicken and enjoy it while he still can. Bye, guys. All right, little doggy, you ready for your dinner? <laughs>